welcome to my podcast. Today is Monday, the 17th of August, 2020. And this is a podcast about my knitting, um, books and reading, and then cross-stitch, kind of my usual three things that I talk about. So I hope everyone is doing well wherever you are in the world. And if you're a new viewer, welcome. I hope that you have a reason to hit the subscribe button and come back to visit with me again and enjoy what you see here. If you're a returning viewer, as always, welcome back. And thanks for continuing to come back and listen to me ramble on about crafty things. Um, everything is good here. Um, we're definitely in the heat wave that is hitting California right now. And um, I think Death Valley, I don't know if they've confirmed it or not yet, but Death Valley was um, right at a record breaking heat yesterday. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll maybe have seen the photo I posted yesterday on Sunday. We had very warm temperatures at the house. Uh, it was in the low 90s here. Um, but there was a storm across the valley where we can see the highest peak in New Mexico, Wheeler Peak, and they had snow, they had gotten snow uh, across the way, which was pretty cool. And here in the high desert, we're always happy to have any kind of precipitation because that slowly makes its way down the mountainside to us here at slightly lower levels. So, um, maybe a sign that winter is coming, I would just take some fall for right now. So um, anyway, all is well here. Um, just our usual kind of self-quarantining, mostly at home. We do our grocery shop once a week and um, my husband actually went to the hardware store this weekend, but that is about all we do. So lots to talk about in the world of crafting. Let's hop on into it. I'm going to start with knitting as per usual. Um, the first thing I wanted to share is a finished pair of socks. These are just some basic plain vanilla socks. Um, I didn't really use a pattern, but I did use the Fish Lips Kiss Heel, a twisted one by one ribbing, and a wide toe. The colorway is called Girl at the Rock Show from the um, indie dyer Countess of Blaze, who's in the UK. They are super fun. They are not exactly matchy matchy, but close enough with all the crazy pooling, I don't think a perfect match particularly matters. The yarn is her Blue Faced Baron, which is a Blue Faced Lester sock yarn. It has a fairly tight twist and it's a little bit wiry when you knit it up, but I did wash and block these and it softens up really nicely. I was very, very happy with how these came out. Um, so 64 inch foot uh, leg and foot circumference on these and I just knitted around and around and popped in the heels and kept going. So yeah, they are... They are very fun, and I am particularly fond of how this became this and this at the heels. I think that looks really cool. Um, I will say one proviso about these, um, which is typical of um, socks that have a yarn that pools. You can see that the colorway kind of migrates, and I wanted to keep the back of the sock fairly plain and have the party happening in the front. Um, so if I got to a point, uh, it wasn't such a big deal here because I had the heel to work back and forth on, which changes the color sequence anyway. Um, but if I had a point where I felt like the color was starting to drift too much, either to the bottom or the back of the sock, I just cheated it out and did um, a short row to rework where the color was going to land and kind of push it back one way or the other. Um, I think I had to do that once on these socks, somewhere down in here. And I think I did it twice on these, somewhere maybe here and maybe here. I think it was, looks like there. 
So it doesn't really affect the fit of the sock when you're working at this small a gauge and it doesn't leave like a huge lump or anything. Um, but it does let you control the color a little bit because I felt like if I was going to have plain white socks, I'd just make plain white socks, but I wanted to have as much of the pooling kind of on the public surfaces as possible. So those are completed and that is the second pair that I have finished for the 100 days of socks and I'll show you what I'm working on next for my uh, knit along. Uh, my friend Christina gifted me this really great, oops, upside down, sorry, really great hand painted sock blank from Gail's Art. Here's her business card. She's on Etsy. This is in her colorway Blue Daisy. And if you haven't worked with a sock blank before, the deal is that the mill knits up this blank or you can buy sock yarn if you have a like a machine knitting to knit this length. It's basically like a scarf. And then you can over dye it in different ways. Um, she uses a two, two technique combination that puts the background kind of that watercolor effect on and then she uses a stamp or in this case stamps to apply color and motifs over top of it. And then you grab one of the ends and start unraveling it and that becomes the sock yarn that you're going to use to knit with. And it's really fun because it mixes the colors up quite a bit when you knit. So I've got myself all wrapped up here. Hang on. I don't know what I did. Sorry. There we go. So I am knitting these from the top down. I'm kind of not using a pattern. Um, one of Nancy Bush's sock pattern books, her um, historical sock book, has this stitch pattern, which is a very simple pattern called Ringwood, um, for a pair of socks that she does with 72 stitches around, which is too big for my leg and foot circumference. So I just knocked the stitch count down to my usual 64 stitch because these have a fair amount of spring to them. Um, I did just a one by one rib and then I worked the ringwood pattern down to the heel, did a fish lips kiss heel, and I'm working the ringwood pattern on the top of the sock and just plain stocking it on the sole. So that's where I am with these. This is the first one. I love how the colors are coming out. I think it's just really cool to watch them grow as you knit the sock. It's not exactly stripey, but sort of here on the heel or bottom of the foot. It's just very cool because you, you don't know for sure what you're going to get. I mean, you kind of know what the colors are going to be, but um, definitely changes quite, quite a lot. So I'm having a blast with these and we'll just keep, just keep knitting on them. Um, the other project that I have been working on quite a bit, which I am focused on getting finished for this week, is my portage sweater. I did not bring the pattern with me. As always, I will put a link down below to the pattern pages on Ravelry if there is a pattern for them. Um, in this case, the designer is Melissa Shashwari. And this is a DK weight kind of open jacket type cardigan. And I'm definitely in the home stretch on it. So I have got a light source there, maybe too bright. Um, so I have this sleeve finished and I have finished the cardigan down through the front pockets, which I have attached. I need to do a little bit more of some end weaving in. You can see that on the inside there too. And there's the back. That might be better. It's getting really washed out. Um, 
the back of it and you can see that I am most of the way down the sleeve. I have <laughs> that much left for the second sleeve and then just ends to weave in and this is done. And I've started weaving in the ends already. I did some of that um, just like while I was sitting watching TV when I didn't have my last yarn cake wound up. Um, really enjoyed this pattern. I'm going to be featuring it in this yarn base, which is a Blue Face Luster uh, DK weight for my Knitter's Journey Club for the fall, which I think this will be perfect. I love this big snug shawl collar on it, um, but it is an epic knit to get all of this done. This is a lot of knitting, a lot of knitting. Um, it's not hard. It's just getting through it. Um, and I like the longer length. This is sort of just below rear end length. Um, so I think it'll be great to wear over a t-shirt or even like a sweater vest with a t-shirt under it and then this over it um, once the weather officially cools off. So hoping to have that done this week and that would be nice to have that garment kind of off my plate and ready to go. And then finally, I wanted to share some really nice products that I received. Um, I had a message on Instagram um, from my friend Glenn, who's Southern Stitcher. Hi, Glenn. Um, who I knew long ago when we lived in Virginia. She's still in Virginia. And so for my birthday, she had sent me some items that were from a UK company called katiegreen.co.uk. And Katie is also the Green Bean podcast, and she's an artist. So she included this cute little promo postcard, which has many things in it that I love. And here's more of her artwork. Um, a really nice little card from the artist herself. And uh, Glenn had arranged to have her send me this adorable note card. Um, it says, Oh, the potential. Lots of hand knitted things on it in this great pen and ink drawing. Um, she also sent me a little rubber stamp that has flowers and a ball of yarn on it. Um, a matching notebook that has Ode the Potential on it. Just a great blank grid notebook for planning all kinds of things. And then she also um, had Katie send this really cute booklet. It's just a short little sort of artist's musing booklet that talks about, well, what it says, some drawings about knitting. And she's got some adorable illustrations. This is about a pair of mittens where she lost one and had to figure out how to make another mate for the missing one. And she talks about her grandmother being a knitter and then shopping for stash and making her own clothes. So it's just a really sweet little booklet and I really enjoyed it. It's going on my permanent bookshelf just to flip through when I need to have a smile put on my face, I think. Um, lots of good stuff in that. Here's another, oop, her business card with her puppy. So she is um, at katiegreen.co.uk if you're interested in any of her super cute pro products. So thank you, Glenn. That was fun to receive. It took a little while to get here, but you know, postal service is not in a good place right now. So once it left Royal Mail, who knows where it wandered to, but it did get here safely, so all is good. So I know I already said thank you um, over in a private message, but thank you again. I loved those. They were perfect. Um, 
Oh, so uh, a few tidbits um, that are shop related for my Willy Wonka Fiber Shop. The first is that I am happy to announce that Advent Kits that I am doing along with the Yarn Guys as a collaborative effort will go on sale over the Labor Day weekend here in the United States. And it's, um, so that's gonna be that first weekend in September. We'll ship it happily anywhere in the world. Um, you'll have lots of different things to choose from. Um, if you follow me on Instagram as Willy Wonka Fiber, um, you will see some previews and some things that inspired us in terms of our color choices and the design and all of that good stuff. So stay tuned there. That is coming shortly. And I will have, as soon as I have a link to the product, I will include that in uh, podcast notes so you got it in hand, but you can always hit their website, which is wallofyarn.com anytime over the Labor Day weekend, and I will link that below um, if you're interested in picking up a kit. Again, two different colorways and two different sizes, so you can get kind of the full big package that'll have 16 mini, mini skeins in it, or the slightly smaller one that will have eight. Um, they all will have pattern, a pattern to go with them, and as well as some add-on goodies um, that will kind of keep you occupied in the lead up to Christmas. And then finally, the other thing I wanted to note was um, I am in the process of revamping my print patterns slash PDF patterns to be more um, visually accessible. So I've been kind of cleaning up the format. I've been moving some things around on the page structure so that you don't have to print the cover page that has the um, image on it if you don't want to, uh, increasing the uh, light and dark between the two, uh, between like the background and the print so they're a e little easier to read and changing up the font a bit, um, and darkening things like the chart symbols. So I am very slowly, finally having figured out how I want to do this, starting to get those rolled out and they are also available on my website just like a Ravelry download. They're in the pattern section and they're a downloadable PDF and so if you've had problems with Ravelry I'm trying to move things onto that platform. Um, they're unfortunately not set up for overseas VAT tax collecting countries yet. Um, I'm working on that. If you are outside the US or Canada and would like a copy of the pattern um, please let me know and we'll we'll figure something out. Um, it's just a workaround at this point until I can get all those moving parts dealt with. So um, those will slowly roll out there. And if there is something that you have a print copy of that you would like to see um, a more accessible version of, please feel free to let me know and I can move that version up the queue a bit. So I think that's going to be it for knitting and yarn type things. So let's switch on over and I'm going to talk about books. So in books, I just have one to talk about this week. I'm close to finishing a couple other ones, but just one to talk about today. The title of it is Notes from a Young Black Chef. The author is Kwame Anwuachi. And I picked this book up um, because I was looking for a book that began with an N, didn't know anything about it, but got it at my library. Uh, it's a biography uh, written by, as you might guess, a young man who is a black chef. Um, he is somebody who competed in Top Chef. I think he was a semi-finalist finisher. He also is still in his 30s, but has uh, opened um, a new opened and it has since closed, um, high-end level uh, restaurant in Washington, D.C. And the book kind of chronicles his younger years up till his late 20s to about 30 to kind of cover where he got from point A to point B. He's the son of two very different immigrant families. His mother is from uh, Jamaica 
she's the one who taught him to cook. She has worked as a caterer, both as an independent caterer and in hotels. And his father is from Nigeria and had come to the United States to go to, to school and he is an accountant. And the family split up fairly early on in this young man's life. He was three and uh, so he, he and his mom and his half sister lived in a very small apartment in inner city New York and he has all these memories from growing up about all these amazing food that his mom would make and the book chronicles his progression growing up and learning to cook from her and their family was not particularly well off. He was fortunate enough to get a scholarship placement to a talented and gifted youth school in New York. So he was introduced to kind of a huge melting pot of kids from all kinds of different backgrounds and um, ethnic, both ethnic and financial, financial type backgrounds. And um, the kids that he wound up kind of gravitating towards were a couple of young men who had, who were growing up in the projects had very unstable family situations in terms of, you know, income. Most of them only had a single parent raising them. And so uh, the, the young man who this book is written about, about his life, got into a fair amount of trouble in his late teens. He does go off to college, but he basically spends his freshman year selling drugs uh, to the kids who he's in school with in Connecticut and gets kicked out and then kind of doesn't know what he's gonna do with his life, but he comes to the realization that he needs to get his act together and figure out how to do what he loves, which is to cook. So um, the book not only chronicles his younger life, but also talks about you know working in a Michelin-starred restaurant kind of how he got his foot in the door, um, how he goes to the Culinary Institute of America, uh, figures out the things he needs to do in order to make himself a success, which the book kind of ends with him being a success. And mixed in with all of this is him coming to terms with and learning to function in a world that doesn't see him as somebody who has a lot of worth for many different reasons. And it's an interesting perspective because um, he, in most instances when he's working at upper level restaurants, no matter what position he's in in the restaurant's kitchen, he's still somebody who winds up being set apart for one, one reason or another. And he kind of has to synthesize how it is he's presenting himself within the larger world that he lives in, as well as the world of the kitchens and the world of elite restaurants. Very interesting life. I mean, he's done so many things um, in the first 30 years of his life. Most of us probably wouldn't even get through in you know, 60 or 90 years worth of living. So um, interesting, not only from the like foodie perspective to kind of get the, the behind the scenes look at becoming a chef and the things you need to learn and the experiences that he has that make made him who he is. Um, but then also within the context of larger race relations and expectations here in the United States. So I enjoyed it. It was a very good book and very interesting and kind of kept me turning the pages to see where he would land next. So I would recommend that if you have any interest in any of those topics. So I'll probably have a few more to report on next time I talk to you kind of closer to the end of August. Um, but that's going to do us for books now and we're going to move on to cross stitching. So for cross stitching, I have um, two finishes to share with you and then one other project's progress and some very minimal haul. So maybe we'll, I'll show you what I've picked up 
um, because it will take two minutes. Uh, two colors of uh, Gentle Arts floss that I need for Anniversaries of the Heart. I'm slowly but surely trying to find um, both of these colors. This is Picnic Basket and this is Flax. Have been very difficult to find, but I need them for, I think it's either Block 1 or Block 2 in Anniversaries of the Heart, which no, I have not started yet, but will. Um, I'll talk about that closer to the end. Um, so I picked those up when I when they finally were back available and then I also picked up the two new Brenda Gervais patterns uh, for the ha for Halloween. This is Witch's Brew which I think is super cute with the teacup and all of her little flowering plants. And then this is Hilda Boo and Sunflowers 2. And I love that one with the little candy corn border. Is that not super sweet? So um, those will get started at some point, just not sure when. Um, they're not on like a fast track or anything, but I had been waiting for them to come out and you know I love her stuff. You'll see that in a moment. So pick those up. That was, that, that was all I added on. So let's talk about finishes. Um, I have sort of fully finished these. I have put backings on these uh, that I'm going to show you. I haven't stuffed them yet, so they look a little odd, but close enough. Um, this is Welcome Spring by The Drawn Thread. This was the last of the four summer, um, of last four season uh, of these that I needed to do. Um, I stitched this on a 28 count um, antique white Monaco and I used color and cotton threads to stitch it. Um, the colors are pretty true on that. I really like this color called Bermuda, that's the lettering. Um, a few specialty stitches in this one. There's kind of a braided one here, and then these are rice stitches, but they're kind of stacked, so they look like the woven basket, and then satin stitch for the eggs. There's also satin stitch for those leaves and the climbing roses, or at least that's what I'm calling them. Um, I didn't like the coverage with I used two strands over two on this and I didn't like the coverage on the satin stitch so I actually went back over everything to make them a little bit more 3D and to stand out. So they technically have four, four threads over them but I like it much better. It was There was too much fabric showing. And this is the backing that I chose. It's kind of that same turquoisey, tealy blue excuse me, itchy nose. Um, yeah, so that one's finished other than stuffing and then, you know, sewing the little opening here at the bottom uh, and ready for spring next year for 2021. Um, like I said, I have the other three of those done and I have them out on my table and I just rotate through them. The next finish I have is... Um, from Brenda Gervais. This is the December Ward Play. This is the last of the 12 in this series. Uh, I stitched this on a 32 count uh, Valor linen from Picture This Plus and all of these are color and cotton uh, hand dyed threads with the exception of Santa's uh, suit which is a classic Colorworks colorway. And again, this needs to be stuffed, but I backed it with this little green fern type pattern. And so I just need to stuff it and sew it closed. And then this is ready for December. And I know you saw this last time that I was here, but this was my May finish. And I just wanted to show you the cute fabric that I found that I thought would go great with it with the bees because the front has all of these bees and the bee keep, bee skep over here. So um, this is also a 32 count linen that I can never remember the name of from Picture This Plus and Color and Cotton Hand Dyed Floss. I 
think there's some ghast in here too. I think this is actually picket fence. So anyway, um, so those were the last two. Those came off of my Stitch 20 and 20 list and um, as did the Welcome Spring. So I have two, I have four pieces left that I'm working on. All right. Next up, um, I also worked on Which Way, which is a Heaven and Earth chart with artwork from Molly Harrison. Uh, I put in a thousand more stitches on this one and here she is. I worked on this page, so this is the entire width, this is the mini, this is the entire width of the design, and this right here is the bottom of that page, so I'm working that way. Uh, I worked up here in the moon, added a little bit in the background, I mean, not that you can necessarily tell what that is, and then started on the jack-o'-lanterns, this is the her glove, she's holding it like that, and then these are the hanging down pumpkins. They're right there. So that was really fun to work on. Um, this will come out later in the year, you know, more closer to Halloween um, for some time. Um, but I have met my year goal on that, which was to finish that top row of pages. So very excited on that one and a very fun stitch. Um, I have been working on my desert mandala. I'm going to bring that up to show you next time because I needed to fasten off some threads. Um, I had one that kind of got hooked on the back and I realized when I was getting ready to film that I needed to do a little cleanup work on the reverse before I forget. So um, I will bring that to show you next time. And then I just started work on the Cooler Design Studio Studios Summer Sampler which I have not worked on at all this year, and I'm gonna be working on that probably the first few days of this week and see how that goes. So if you've been following my Stitch, uh, stitch 20 and 20 plans, the things that I have left to finish are uh, the top 25% of the Desert Mandala. <clears throat> I need to get a page finish on a Long Winter's Nap, which is a Heaven and Earth design. I'm gonna finish Winter Fairy by Joan Elliott. And then I have Christmas Morning Pets, that's a Dimensions Gold, uh, Gold Petite. So those are the four things I have left to do. And I'm pretty well decided that September is going to be focusing on getting the top section of the Desert Mandala piece done. I have Christmas Morning Pets kind of set to the side. I have a fair amount of it done. As you know, those projects, even though it's this big, take forever to do. My husband and I were originally planning on having some vacation time um, in mid to late September, but I don't know if we're going to be able to do that because our state still is requiring a mandatory 14-day quarantine when you leave the state, and we were planning to go to Colorado, so I don't know. I don't know if we'll go or not. I had saved that thinking, well, that would be a great thing to take on the trip with us and, and stitch on because it's a kit and it's portable. Um, so it's kind of in a holding pattern. My plan for Winter Fairy is to work on it uh, the last week of August and see how far I get done. Uh, since I'm doing that as a casual every other month sal with um, Leah over at Aviatrix Stitcher. Hey, Leah. And so that'll give me, I think, a good feeling on how much more of that I have left to do. And I'm also going to get the page finish taken care of. I don't have that much left to do, just a few hundred stitches on a long winter's nap in September. So I've been talking back and forth with Kim at Spartan Stitcher, like we do. Hi, Kim. Uh, about, you know, things to finish, things to get started, and... Uh, so I have kind of a short list of a few other things that I would like to start this year. But one thing that I've been kind of going back and forth about is my anniversaries at the heart. 
I had originally thought that I might do that so they would be, you know, all individual, like these size things. And it would be fun then to have out um, in my little display where I also have some, some pictures of like my grandparents and family members that it would be kind of fun to display those out with all of that um, on the months that they correspond to family members' birthdays or anniversaries or things that I was kind of commemorating, if you will. And I had in my head that I was thinking about maybe doing them all with kind of a shabby chic finish where I'd add some old lace and some sort of vintagey feeling fabrics for, you know, the background. And then I could start to have them out to enjoy earlier in the year or finish one, get it fin fully finished, and then have it to enjoy as opposed to having to wait for all of the blocks to be done. Um, if you watch Cozy Egg, uh, Michelle over at Cozy Egg, hi Michelle, uh, you'll know that she finished hers this year and Jessie Marie's got hers, hey Jess, uh, started as one big piece. So it would be more, you know, more of this kind of layout, even though this is not Blackbird Designs. So I, that's initially where I was going. And then when I got looking at how big the blocks were, I thought, okay, I don't know if they will work quite as well as like small standalones. But then I got thinking if I did them on 40 count, which is what I, I know Michelle did her full piece on. I'm not sure what Jess is using for hers. Um, I can't remember what count she's doing hers on. If if I did them on 40 count, one strand over two, so they'd be the equivalent of a 20 count, if that might work. I have less wall space and I have more sort of table space that I could put that out on. Um, so I don't know. If you all have a thought about that, give me your opinion if you would. If you think that they would still work as little individual pieces um, to kind of represent each of the seasons of that person's life. So like my grandmother's birthday month, um, I'd have one out for her and maybe even double up. October is a difficult month for me because my dad's birthday is in October, my grandma's birthday was in October. My dad's dad's birthday was in October and my mom's parents got married in October. So I have actually four October dates, but then like I have nothing in August. So just how it works out. And I was thinking that that, that might, you know, kind of balance some of it out where I would customize um, each of those little blocks close to the month um, that they're designated in the pattern, but I wouldn't have to try to figure out how to like fit all of my October events into a block in one full piece. I don't know if that makes sense, but anyway. Um, once I have that figured out, I'm basically ready to start. Uh, I've got some things, you know, set aside. I've got floss set aside. I've got the patterns. I'm ready to go. Um, yeah. My other consideration with that is that I have a lot of really big pieces on the go or plan to start and if I did each of the blocks as its own kind of separate thing then they would be a little bit more portable and again I could finish one and be able to enjoy it um, rather than waiting to finish the entire wall piece you know the one big piece the other thing that I'm pondering about starting and haven't decided yet but you can maybe help me I fell in love with the um, monochromatic Adele Sessler pieces that are on Heaven and Earth Design and I will link to the three of them that I like below. Excuse me. <clears throat> um, I have two of them and I'll notate that on, the, on those below. They're the companion pieces called Companions. And they're an elf and their horse. There's two. There's a dark horse and a light horse. And I love those and I want to do them. They are not technically full coverage as we counted in the full coverage fanatics group because they don't have a, the entire background is not stitched. 
And then I also have really gotten attached to her Beloved design, which if you are in our Full Coverage Facebook, Full Coverage Fanatics Facebook group or the Heaven and Earth Design group, you've probably seen people stitching. Um, it's two elves as well, and it's also monochromatic. Again, I'll stick links below to the Heaven and Earth Design pages for those. So I would like to start one of those. I have the two companion pieces already. I certainly could get the beloved piece. Um, so the question is, do I start Beloved and use that as a full coverage fanatics piece so I can use that in the group? Do I start the first of the companions pieces just knowing it's going to be yet another massive stitch like I do? Uh, do I start two of them, all three of them? Kim's voting for all three, I'm pretty sure. I can kind of hear her saying that. Um, they don't require a ton of floss in the sense that there's not very many colors. I think there's under 50, maybe even 25 or so colors in them. It's not very many colors. Um, so it would be easy to just get started on any of them, but I'm undecided on that. So let me know if you have a preference or a thought towards that. Any of those options are valid, by the way. Um, and I probably will be starting that once I get um, two more finishes done off my 20 and 20 list because then I will feel like I only have two left to go and I'm in the home stretch and I realistically can do that and justify celebrating with a new start. Okay, that's it for the rambling. I think that is it for me today. I hope you all are well. I am thinking of all of you as you're trying to gear up to get your kids back to school, if that is the case at your end, because that sounds like a horrible mess and nightmare. Um, so my sympathies, and I hope you're hanging in there. Uh, I will be back sometime before the end of the month. I'm not exactly sure when, but we'll try to sneak sneak a recording in at some point, maybe in a week or so. Hard to believe that September's kind of creeping up on us. We're over the halfway mark here in, in August and headed down, down to September and the fall season. So I hope that you have time to relax and get some crafting done and that you all are staying safe and well. And I will talk to you soon. Bye for now.